And Tough Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Tonight, more political parties are joining the fight to reverse the recent appointment of two electoral commission members widely condemned as overtly partisan. Uh, today, the NDC has taken the lead and filed a formal petition with the Council of State, asking it to reconsider its advice to President Akufuado in confirming these appointments. Now, Dr. Peter Apiahene and Hajia uh, Salima Ahmed Tijani's appointments have been questioned by a host of civil society actors, including the reputable Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo. Of particular concern is the appointment of Dr. Apiahene, who the NDC today described as an MPP hardliner and an irredeemably partisan individual. Well, tonight, the NDC is uh, getting the support of the Convention People's Party in the attempt to get the Council of State to intervene. More on that shortly. But first, the NDC has seen this petition uh, to the Council of State being digging deep into the background of Dr. Peter uh, Apiahene, detailing what they claim to be the extent of his involvement with the MPP. And, and Kojo, uh, you have this document, this petition that you've sent to the uh, Council of State. There, there, was, there was a few things that were already in the public domain that we knew had been discussed, one of which is the fact that the individual in question, uh, Dr. Apiahene, was an active member of the MPP's uh, youth wing at the tertiary universities. Now, the MPP, the NDC in this petition is claiming that he's not only just an active member, he's a card-bearing member mm. of mm. the MPP. Yes. Now, um, according to the NDC, um, he has a lot of experience in election issues in Ghana. Now, um, among his political positions in the New Patriotic Party Elections Management are the following. The list, according to the member of the 2022 Bono Regional Election Committee of the MPP, he is also born original IT director for election 2020 for the MPP. So he was the born original IT director for that election. Now, um, he was the born original D-Day coordinator for the election 2020 for the MPP. Um, according to the NDC, he um, was a member of the National Research and Data Analysis Team for the election 2020 for the NPP. Also, the election, uh, the regional coalition officer for the MPP internal coalition for election 2020 and a member of the Bono Regional Communications Team of the MPP. So that's something he's still a member of until his appointment as a member of the Electoral Commission. So claims the NDC in this petition yes. to yeah. the uh, Council of State. And they also got hold of his personal profile and the the extractor quotes from there mm -hmm. uh, how he himself describes uh, himself yes. in this profile as mm -hmm. a, a a strong mpp man with a lot of experience in election issues in ghana yeah uh, and and then and then also the subject of uh, the card bearing membership also comes up uh, as they claim he's not only a card bearing member of the new patriotic party but a recognized leading figure mm -hmm. within the ranks of the party and yeah. then go ahead to list all uh, the positions he's mm -hmm. held so the NDC's detail that they've laid before the Council of State, mm. uh, for them, I guess, maybe gen then gives us a sense why. Because if you look at what he, they provided, and this is subject to interrogation, I'm pretty sure if the Council of State wants to look into it, they have to verify these claims. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His service, extensively related to election collation, election uh, matters, yeah. and uh, leading it for the MPP, mm. according to the NDC, in the document they presented before the council of state so what are they asking the council of state to do now before we even get there with all that they've listed they said they and, and then they go ahead to say that it is our considered view that the appointment of a personality would search overwhelmingly partisan credentials into electoral commission will hamper public confidence in the constitutionally independent body and undermine the conduct of free fair and transparent elections in ghana now the ndc to your question is asking uh, that uh, and, and if i want to quote them they say we are aware that once dr piahini and hajia salima have been sworn in as members of the commission the council of state has become factus uh, factus official in the process of the appointment we are nevertheless of the view that against the background of the evidence that we have presented it is possible for the council to reconsider it advice to the president in order to erase any perception that a council has been complicit in the appointment of these 
patently partisan individuals to electoral commission and to safeguard the integrity of the council as far as its role in the structure of our governance architecture is concerned so mm. you advise the president on their on this appointment can you upon these evidence we've presented reconsider the same advice you gave and advise the president accordingly it's a pretty interesting call to the council of state uh, mm. the party uh, send this and signed by the national chairman himself uh john singh as in Kitia, but they copied it to the president mm -hmm. they copied it to the national peace council yeah they copied it to the electoral commission itself the european union observer, observer team. team in accra mm -hmm. the african union observer team in accra the catholic bishops conference a uh, christian council uh, the even american ambassador, ambassador. Mm -hmm. um, to ghana as well as the british the, ambassador as well the british the, high commissioner i see mm -hmm. even um, the ambassador of the netherlands and then the german ambassador and as the well, german yeah, as well. Also, yeah. all of them being been copied in this as well Let, let's bring in the national communications officer of the ndc joins us on the telephone line right now mr james fee sammy james thank you for your time here on top story thanks for having me here the the petition and the call to the council of state it, 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 is without precedent the council of state already having advised and you admit it's now you know thank to sufficio yet you say they should reconsider this is without precedent uh, uh, do you believe this is a realistic call that the council of state can actually act upon absolutely we believe that um the council of state is a very important bipartisan body in the democratic system of this country they are given the duty to advise the president of the republic of ghana in the appointment of members to constitutionally independent institutions one of which is the electoral commission of ghana and in doing so uh, we think that the council should be minded by the national interest their fidelity is to the Republic of Ghana and the national interest and not any partisan or parochial interest. And that is why we decided to write to them to appeal to their conscience and judgment on this matter. We are giving them the benefit of the doubt that they may not have addressed their mind to these facts at the time the president sought the advice on this matter. You see, you know, the reason why this issue is very important is that one of the most important features of every democracy is the right of the people to choose their own leaders through democratic elections. And in our country, it is the Electoral Commission that is responsible for the management of elections. And therefore, public confidence in that, in that institution is of utmost importance to our democracy and to free, fair, and transparent elections. If you have a situation where public confidence in the Electoral Commission has plummeted to an all-time low of 10% as we speak, according to the latest Afrobarometer survey, then it should give every world meaning genuine cause for concern. And that is why we think that these partisan appointments, which amount to a bastardization of the Electoral Commission, which partisan characters belonging to the ruling party is very very dangerous for our democracy and so the council of state we expect must take a look at the evidence we have presented before them and in good conscience decide whether now having the benefit of all these pieces of evidence the advice to the, pre the president which was in authority related to the appointment of Dr. Apia Hine and Hedia Salima was proper or not. If they, if they come to the conclusion that that advice was improper, as all world meaning Ghanaians are saying, then they must do the right thing for the sake of posterity, for the sake of the record, to at least write to the president and tell the president that, Mr. President, you know what? Since we gave advice on the appointment of these people into the EC, we have come by fresh evidence that shows that these people are publicly known hide liners, you know, like we described in the letter, persons who are irredeemably partisan and, and, and who belong to the ruling party. And therefore, the appointments into 
the revered and constitutionally independent electoral commission is improper. We will have some, you know, um, um, joy to know that that revered institution alone would have, uh, 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 at least would have taken that principled stance in the national interest. And that is, will begin, uh, this is just a set of a series of steps that the National Democratic Congress will be taking to protest against these partisan appointments into the electoral yeah, but, but you accept, even if they choose to do it, it will only have moral suasion, no legal backing whatsoever, because there's no constitutional provision or path to actually do this that leads to any real concrete outcomes for you? Well, moral situation for me is a very powerful tool, you know, uh, um, um, that we need to look at. In other parts of the country, through moral situation and pressure from the citizenry, people have gotten even precedence of those nations to resign. And so it is very possible to use moral situation as a tool of getting Dr. Pia Hene and Hedja Salina to resign. And that is what we have all commenced. And I'm very happy that the NDC is not alone in this endeavor. Even before we publicly commented on this matter, civil society had already taken the lead, you know, condemning and calling for a total rejection of these appointments. Because you, know, you don't have to be an NDC member to know that what President Sekou has done is a sacrilege against the constitution of Ghana. In this petition to the Council of State, you provide further and better particulars uh, digging into the background of Dr. Piahene. One of the claims you've made is that he is actually a card-bearing member of the MPP. Where's the evidence to back this? Do you have a copy of this card? Um, uh, there, there is a political... You know that he aspired for the position of Bono Regional IT and Research Director for the MPP. And when he was aspiring for that appointment, um, persons who supported his bid shared his political profile on various social platforms of the NDP. And that is a political profile we have intercepted, which was prepared by Dr. Pia himself. And in that political profile, which was shared, especially on NDP platforms in the Bono region at the time, he professes to be a Cadbury member of the NPP, and he professes to have played many, you know, several key roles um, 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 in the NPP related to election 20, um, election results, collection, and so on. I will not belabor the point because your colleague has already read out those positions. And so the statements we are making are totally factual. Yeah, in but, but is, is that, is that a verified document? The letter, a pen drive, which has audiovisuals of public commentary that this Dr. Pia Hene is on record to have made for the New Patriotic Party on various issues of, 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 of uh, I mean, public interest. And so it is glaringly clear that this is an MPP food sugar. This is an MPP die in the wood. This person is not qualified. He is not fit to be a member of the once revered Electoral Commission of Ghana because nobody will have confidence in him to be a fair arbiter or a fair referee in uh, elections in this country. Be before you sent in the petition today, you, you, you make the point that Kodeo and other civil society organizations have done the same. Stay with me because joining me right now is uh, Paul Nanakwabana Brampa uh, Mensa. He's a programs manager at uh, CDD Ghana and the a central player in the in the Kodeo scheme a day together came together uh, for this press conference um, Mr. Abraham thank you for your time here on Top Story so since this press conference at which you make the call for the individuals involved themselves to resign have you heard anything back have there been any movement since uh, good evening Ivans uh, and let me say a very good evening to our listeners and uh, also to Sami uh, no, we've not had any response from any quarters, actually. Uh, and and uh, we think, as we stated in the in the press statements, uh, and uh, as the law stands, uh, as soon as uh, the confirmation is done and the person uh, has been given the not to go, the only avenues available for us to get him out 
uh, is one for him to morally uh, hang, uh, resign or to uh, through uh, incapacitation or death or three probably through impeachment, which is you and I know uh, it's a long process. So we were expecting uh, 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 Dr. Piagne, especially and the other lady, to morally look into all the evidence available. And, and the, the, the commission they were going to serve, uh, actually, we did say that, yes, legally, there are no clauses in the Constitution that forbid President uh, Kufuado to have appointed him and the other lady. But uh, because of the nature of the independence of the institution they are going to serve, it will be better we purge the institution of any uh, uh, issues that had to do of uh, people who breached the independent clauses, and therefore they were to resign. Uh, so I think that's the same call that has been made over the years by other institutions who have also uh, petitioned uh, the people. I'm just hearing this evening and uh, through your medium that the NDC has formally also appealed to uh, the Council of State to reconsider the advisory decision. I'm not sure uh, what that will do uh, other to also probably uh, preach to the people involved to for same as we have said to resign, and other than that, I don't know any other thing that will uh, that enjoin the Council of State to. Uh, 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 I'm not sure what they can do apart from appealing to their conscience and morality uh, to, to uh, resign because of the evidence available that the appointment breached the independent clause of the institution they are going to serve. And and I, that's I, I guess is what uh, Sami had explained that they, at least that then adds some moral suasion to the conversation. If the Council of State that advised now in the light in light of the uh, additional evidence that you and others have provided, they can then go back to the president and suggest to the president, Mr. President, yes, we advise that you go ahead. Uh, but having seen what we now seen, we believe that uh, it's. But then even if that's the case, there's a legal question. Um, once you've appointed, they have security of tenure. And so, I mean, that's, that's, that comes to you. Even if the president wants to do it, now there's a constitutionally prescribed process for removal of confirmed electoral commission members. So this is, this is, not, this is something that constitutionally is, is the tall order and putting it mildly is almost impossible. No, we are not saying that um, a reconsideration or a change um, in the position of the Council of State on this matter would necessarily lead to the resignation or the removal from office of these uh, um, new members of the Electoral Commission. But it is an important, it will be a very important factor for the good people of this country and the international community to know that we have a council of states that is mindful of the national interest and um, 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 the negative consequences that such appointments can have on the credibility and integrity of the Electoral Commission, and that they have done the right thing by reconsidering their position. I think that it will add to the pressure, that is the groundswell of pressure that is beginning to build up, you know, uh, um, from civil society, the media, political parties, and so on, for the resignation of these two people. We, we think that it is totally wrong for this particular council of state to go down in record or, or, or in record or in history as having endorsed the appointment of these partisan characters into the uh, uh, issue. If for nothing at all, for the sake of posterity, we are appealing to their judgment, we are appealing to their conscience, that reconsider your position in the light of this evidence that we are providing to you. And if they do that, we will be very grateful, which I commend them, and that will be, you know, just the first step, you know, towards the, the, the many actions that we as a political party, of course, in collaboration with other stakeholders, intend to take on this matter. And, and Samir, that, that, begs, that begs the question. Is also very powerful. Yeah, it begs like, the question, Samir, what you uh, just my said. My colleague has indicated it's very difficult using the legal route on this matter to achieve the objective we are all looking for. You're looking for. And, and, and Samir, what, what you just said begs the question. So if the Council of State refused to act on the petition, what happens? Well, they will go down uh, 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 in history in infamy as uh, the council that recommended or endorsed or supported 
the appointment of such partisan characters into the Electoral Commission, something that has never happened in the history of this country. And I, I would want to believe that there are men of conscience in the Council of State who appreciate the fact that a good name is better than any partisan consideration and would want to leave an enduring legacy that one day they'll be proud of. And so we would want to leave this, uh, give them the benefit of the doubt, allow them to examine the evidence we have put before them, and it is our hope that they will reconsider their position on this matter. But if, they are, if they do that, fine. If they don't do that, it will not stop us from uh, um, undertaking the other um, steps that... We and, and what are these steps? You hinted that you are planning other steps. Street action, obviously, will be an imperative. Street what? action Street by action. the people of the country people from all walks of life demanding the resignation of these two partisan characters into the electoral commission. That is something we are thinking about strongly, and in the coming days uh, we'll be giving you further information on that. So we are talking about a form of a, a street protest, a demonstration of a sort? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so, this provides and because of the Kodeo's position on this, you believe it sets a bad precedent, but if it, if it does... Is it an opportunity then? Because the Constitution, that, and the reason we are having this conversation now about uh, how helpless both of you, all you agree, feel, because now it's almost constitutionally impossible to reverse unless you trigger the lay down processes. Is it an opportunity to consider writing this in ink into the Constitution the, in the conversation around review to include as part of the qualification criteria to be uh, an EC chairperson or a member? That, that that individual must be apolitical. Um, thank but, you very much. We are worried that um, this is going to set a bad precedent. That if we are not careful in future, uh, the template will be there, and everybody will just uh, fill the template, and nobody can protest. So let's say, for instance, if CPP or any other political party comes to power right now, and they appoint a known, even a general secretary of the party, to the uh, commission who have the moral confidence to protest because we have endorsed it as normal issue because it, it's not against any clause in the constitution, it's just a moral solution and it goes. But the tenets of the institution itself dwells on independence. So that's why we need to correct this thing so that it doesn't become a bad precedent that we will not have a grounds to protest because we have had a precedent of it. That's why we are worried. And secondly, um, we're talking about the Council of State. I was worried, you know, when this thing came first and I was asking you, I asked myself, does the Council of State have a background secretariat that does uh, an investigation and background check for some of these things to inform the advice to the president? Does the Council of State work with state security institutions to do these checks for them? Do they even have that capacity? So there are so many reforms, not only reforms of the Constitution, there are so many things we need to do to make sure that institutions actually perform and perform effectively. So if the Council of State endorses this, based on what advice, background check on these people, if they don't have, what can we do to support them? In fact, when you look into institutions like parliaments, even committees have secretariat, that, that's a bit of research for them to inform their debates in parliament. Do we look at this uh, to capacitate the Council of State effectively such that in future these things do not happen? Now, I agree perfectly with the NDC, Sammy, that yes, they need to purge their image of what has been done, even though they cannot reverse the decision by mass. It needs to go through certain constitutional steps. But at least coming up publicly to advise against it or advising the president as it does, uh, that probably this we, we did not have the full fact before we give our advice. And therefore, we are just asking that uh, we do something about it or in future you do something about it. But we need to go beyond that to see how we correct those mistakes so in future they do not repeat themselves. Then coming back to how do we revamp the Constitution to correct some of these things say, legally so that uh, we don't leave the power of appointment and appointing anyhow in the hands of the appointing authority. We call for constitutional review. And these are some of the things that we need to start compiling among other clauses in the Constitution that we think uh, 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 have at least their usefulness and that we think we need to be specific on them so as to checkmate themselves in the, in, in the process of doing some of these appointments. Yes, there's, there's the need for these uh, uh, reviews and corrections in the system. So, so what, that, that in that case, that review will say what? That uh, to be uh, an EC chairperson or a uh, commission member, you should be expressly apolitical. 
Come again. Is, is that, are you suggesting that in that review, it should be written that uh, to be a member of the ECU, a chairperson or a deputy, you must be expressly apolitical? Uh, it should match with the tenets of the independence of the institution. Every individual, any clause that we make, must accompany it or must go and match with the tenets of the people who have them. So if you are saying the uh, electoral commission is independent, and that's what they profess. And that's why they are, they are fighting against institutionalizing IPAC. Because then they say if we institutionalize IPAC, then the clause that makes them independent is flouted. Because then and the IPAC decision will be binding on them. In that same vein, the people who work in an independent institution may also have the same background. So any provisions or review that we make must match the tenets of the institution. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Abrampa with the CDD. Thank you, Samuel Jemfi, uh, uh, with the NDC.